I'm John Skinner, and this supports Chapter 11 in my book, Fishing the Bucktail. So I'm going to address a couple of things in this video. One of them is fishing on a slow drift. And uh, yeah, it's very glassy calm here. And anyone who uh, fluke fishes understands how difficult it can be when there's a, a slow drift. And this drifts about 0.5 miles an hour, which is about half the speed that I like to be going. So I've got a one ounce bucktail. That's what I started with. And I'm quickly changing up there. Uh, to a three-quarter ounce spro, and it's a crazy chartreuse color. And white's a great color. I use that most of the time. Uh, chartreuse is another one of my favorites because it's high visibility, and that's always a good thing. And when I say crazy chartreuse, that's actually what spro calls that particular color. I'm fishing on an 18-inch minimum size limit, and this one's probably about 16, so he's going back. All right, as I often do, I've chosen a spot that's uh, away from everybody. That one speck on the horizon, it's, that boat's actually a little bit closer than it looks, but that's a party boat. But um, you know, I'm staying plenty clear of, uh, of that. And I've got some structure here that I've marked in the past that I, I know is pretty good, and that's what I'm focusing on. And the structure is actually a drop-off. I've got a ledge there. It goes from maybe 16 to 24 feet, and I'm working along the, uh, right along that ledge. The rig is what I use in many of my videos. Uh, at the bottom, there is a three-quarter ounce Spro Bucktail in this case. And one foot above that, I have a 3.0 Gamagatsu bait holder hook and a three-inch Gulp Shrimp New Penny Color. And the Gulp Shrimp uh, this season has been very, very productive and actually lasts several seasons. And uh, uh, doesn't look like much when you drag it through the water, but I've watched, seen it on the underwater video and it actually darts quite nicely and fish love it. And the bucktail is tipped with a four inch Berkeley Gulp Alive swimming mullet. And it looks like this one took the shrimp. And on my YouTube channel, I have a video that shows exactly how to tie the rig. All right, that party boat has um, made his way over to the top of uh, where I would start my drift. So that's going to impact uh, what I do. Um, yeah, I really don't want to drift over the water that the party boat has drifted over. First of all, you know, boy, these captains have a tough job keeping these clients happy and, uh, you know, under all kinds of conditions. So, uh, you know, I don't envy their task. But, um, you know, there's a lot of lines in the water, and I can just imagine uh, if there's any fluke that these guys drift over, fluke have an excellent wider range of things they can grab onto. So I've cut my drift a little shorter than I would like to and pretty much um, pulled up behind them because um, I am down current of where that party boat is, and uh, this way here I don't have to like pick up his leftovers and I, I did want to stay right along that line that I made on the last drift because I, I knew there were some fish there. So the key to staying productive on such a slow drift is to put um, a lot of motion on the jig, you know, really bounce rapidly. If you were to be dragging a bait strip along the bottom here, uh, very good chance you're going to get killed by the crabs because there's a fair number of those around. And the same would go for if you were bouncing the bucktail pretty gently, uh, the crabs would be grabbing on also. So if you keep uh, fast motion on the jig, that really uh, keeps you away from the interference creatures and it triggers the, the fish, it attracts the fluke. And you know, even though I've got you know really poor drift conditions here, this one drift, which is going to last, I think it was about 25 minutes, uh, this one drift is going to produce an entire limit of fluke for me and a, a limit being five fish. So the other key to staying productive here is to use as light a weight uh, jig or bucktail as possible. And as I mentioned in the beginning, I started out with a one ounce and I recognized immediately that I could go even a little bit lighter than that without scoping out. And, and scoping out means you have to keep letting out line to stay near the bottom and you get a big angle in your line. Uh, so I went down to that three quarter ounce and you know this is 20 feet of water so that's a pretty lightweight jig and you know considering that there's two gulp baits on here as well 
Um, you know, three quarter ounces is pretty light, but it is staying down. It's got very nice natural motion, and you know, the, the fish are responding. And fluke are called flounder in many parts of the country. So this is a very quiet day with like no signs of life. There's no uh, seagulls or arctic terns or anything uh, working over schools of bait. It's just real quiet and no indication that there's um, sand eels around. Sand eels are the predominant bait fish here that the fluke often feed on. Uh, when I see that situation, uh, the absence of sand eels, then almost certainly I'm going to be using the gulp shrimp uh, on that teaser hook because if there's no uh, bait fish, if there are no bait fish around, no sand eels, a lot of times these fluke are going to shift over to alternative foods and they could be crabs, shrimp, uh, other things like that. So uh, I'll go to that three inch gulp shrimp and it's just been uh, very productive for me. I love this rod. This is a Tsunami um, 7 foot classic. It's rated 10 to 20 pound test line. Uh, the model is a TSCC701MH and the reel is a uh, Quantum Accurist spooled with 15 pound test spider wire stealth and is 20 pound test fluorocarbon for the leader. And this video is shot in mid-June in eastern Long Island Sound. I've got enough in the cooler for dinner. I'm going to let this one go. Um, I actually prefer the smaller ones, the 18, 19 inches. Uh, just I like the thinner fillets better for frying, so I, I let that guy go. Uh, okay, the gulp shrimp. You see me messing around with this one here. Uh, a nice thing about this bait is you can catch a lot of fish on one gulp shrimp. And what I was trying to do was rehook it. And a lot of times I'll uh, pull the shrimp off and and turn it around. And I don't care whether the hook comes out the top or the bottom or the side, as long as it's um, sitting flat. But that one had gotten pretty chewed up so I switched to a new one. Okay, I'm pretty much done narrating except for near the, the very end. I'll make a few comments as uh, we'll be able to see the breeze come up. And I hope you found this useful and if you enjoy these videos please subscribe to my channel.
here's one of those times where I pull the shrimp off and put it back on again so I can hook it into a new part. And if you do that, uh, you, you can easily get seven, eight, ten fish sometimes out of one of these gulp shrimp. The nice thing about the shrimp is that you don't have um, anything to tear off it. Like with the gulp grubs, you've got the curly tails and they can tear that off, but there's really nothing to tear off on the shrimp. You should really use the net on a fish this size. Um, I don't want to get tangled. It's a, just a good way to lose a rig because when they go thrashing around, they can put extra pressure on the leader and pop something. But um, you know, it's it's not a problem if I lose the fish, and I don't want to mess with the net. Pretty interesting. If you look inshore, you can see the breeze coming, and uh, it's actually going to pick up really quite fast but a lot of times if you're if you watch um, on a day like this you can see when the wind is coming and, and pretty much figure out what direction it's going to be blowing from as well and this one's blowing straight offshore Yeah, so what's a fluke trip without a couple of sea robins? I've been fortunate this trip that there haven't been too many of them. So for those who aren't familiar with these fish, uh, yeah, there's spikes and spines and armor plating. And I've got a wet rag there, and I think that's the safest way both for me and the fish is to get it back in the water quickly. It was barely out of the water, and I don't think touching it with a wet rag is um, doing any damage to it at all. And... Uh, it's keeping my hands from getting cut up as well. So hey, you can hear that wind coming up now. It's coming up pretty fast. <laughs> 